if you do an operation just once and if this operation is unconditional you do it anyway each time you run your program then you don't need a contract statement but if uh, you have some uncertainty uncertainty about outcome or if you repeat the same kind of trial many times the best way to code it is to write a loop the most often you will do for loops sometimes while and another control statement which will be used often is if statement uh, there are other options like switch try and catch they can be useful and uh, we use them sometimes but those two are very important and they are used in most of the cases pause is also uh, a good uh, function uh, when you want to interrupt your uh, program for a given period of time or if you want to instruct the program to wait for a key press. This is a MATLAB function. It is very uh, basic. Uh, in Psych Toolbox uh, there, are, there are other functions which do the same uh, but much more precise. Uh, function pause doesn't have good temporal precision. Now we will try to to write a short program uh, which will use for loop if statement pause and break and it will use our generated by us uh, variable RRA, which is a combination of random and non random data. When you have a sufficiently long mm, statement, mm, it is better to create a script uh, where you will write all this and then you will run uh, all the script from the beginning to the end by a single click let's go to MATLAB and create our script in our working folder we create m file which is a file for scripts let's call it loop script and open it it gives you a template to create a function. We don't use it at the moment. Just delete everything. And we will write here, line by line, what is proposed here. 
first of all, there must be the beginning of the for statement. What does it mean? This statement indicates a condition of execution of everything that is written later after this statement. The variable i is going to have values starting from 1 and ending with lengths of the data array. This is another function called length. Very useful. You can read a help for this function if you don't know it yet. Here it is, the length of the vector. Vector is a name of uh, one-dimensional matrix. So, if we try a length of hmm, the variable RRA, you get an error message, because you didn't create this variable yet in MATLAB. You remember we uh, we worked at the previous uh, topic in Octave. Uh, however, we can go back to our presentation uh, and take all this, copy and paste it in MATLAB. And now we get R A. And for R R A, we add R and R A. Here it is. Let's plot rapidly this variable. Looks nice. Close the plot and we go back to our script. Now this function is going to run because the variable RRA is already created in this working space. Here it is, and the length must be 12. But let's try if it is indeed the case. Yeah. The length of RRA is 12. So I will have values from 1 to 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And the statement 4 means that the program will subsequently assign to i all the listed values first one then two then three at any given cycle of the loop i will have one value starting from one and ending with twelve there will be twelve cycles in total. The cycle will be over here where you write end. This end belongs to this for statement. And everything in between will be executed 
as many times as for statement instructs. Inside for loop, we will place this uh, if statement. If statement allows to take different routes uh, in case of different situation, different conditions. After if, there will be a logical expression, which can be either true or false. If this expression gives you the outcome that is true, it will execute the line after if. However, if this is false, you don't execute this part and you go right away to here, to what is written after else. What we want to do in this part? Uh, we want to discriminate two situations. When our variable, when the, the, the current value of our variable is bigger than 1, then we plot a dot of blue color with x coordinate equal to i and y coordinate equal to current value of of the variable. Let's try to to do something like this once. Plot RRA. Here is the plot. Now uh, we want to put a blue dot here at this point, first point. How can we do it? First we write hold on so that we don't remove anything from our plot. And then we plot a single dot. This is where we indicate that it will be a dot plot. With coordinates on x it is 1 and on y it is RRA, but not all RRA, just the first. Uh, the first value of RRA is this one, 0 0.4. This should give us one dot exactly at x coordinate of 1, the first point, and at y coordinate of the, of the variable that we, we have. And this is how it looks. Now let's manually plot a single dot for tens point location, which is the peak. How do we do it? Do exactly the same, but here we replace x coordinate with 10, and y coordinate will be the tens value of 
uh, RRA. And here we have our plot, plotted dot. If we want it to be green, we add letter G here, and it is going to be green. Here, it is. It's been green. So, what is missing in our script is that we want to create a figure and that we want to prevent any erasing from this figure. Everything should be kept. Hmm. Also here I think we should first build the plot of RA. Good. Is that all what we need? Apparently yes. Let's run it. Yep, we have everything that we requested. All the values that are bigger than 1 are labeled with blue. All the values that are uh, smaller than 1 are labeled in green. Uh, but I want to propose something more complex. Uh, I think it can be interesting if those points they are not drawn rapidly at once, but you draw them one by one with an interval of, let's say, half a second. We add those lines of code inside the for loop. Function draw now means that it will refresh, redraw the figure every cycle of the loop. And the pause is pause. It will wait half a second until uh, the other cycle. Let's close our figure and try to run this script. So now you see that those dots they arrive one by one with an interval of half a second approximately. Um, other thing I wanted to propose you is to try a break statement. Break will stop the for loop if it is located inside the for loop. Uh, we don't know when it is going to work, but we can run break under a certain condition. We used use statement if for a condition that the current value of RRA is bigger than 1.6. At this point, the loop will be broken and will not repeat anymore. If we plot RRA, we can predict that the loop will be broken after this point, because it is higher than 1.6, and this is our condition. Let's close the figure. By the way, if you don't want to do it manually each time, 
at the beginning of your program you can type common close with an argument all and this will instruct MATLAB to close all the figures which are open currently. This figure will be closed when we run this script. Now, now we run it. The dots come, but now everything stopped because we broke the loop. Uh, I hope that the explanation of the logic of the control statement statements was clear enough. Pay attention that you always put end after the statement contact content is complete. For example, if you miss this one Probably the program will give us an error. Here is the error. And the same thing will happen if we don't end properly the for loop. Error. And the error message is that at least one end is missing. So you can look through your program and correct your error. Uh, if you uh, pay attention, I often put semicolon after the end of the line. What does it give? Uh, it doesn't change much in the uh, function itself but it changes the the way how MATLAB displays executed lines outcome for example if I mm, write something like this. It will show the outcome in the comment line. But if I put semicolon after it, the variable a will still be created. However, nothing is shown in the line. This is a difference of ended with semicolon or not ended with it. But the program doesn't change much if you put it or not. Uh, all the lines of codes are available here in the file that you can easily download from the Google Drive. Mm, but you can also type them manually. It is a good way to learn uh, the material better. Uh, saving, clearing, loading. Yeah. Uh, you have already saw that I cleared, uh, th th that I closed all the, the figures by one command, which is close all. Here in Octave we have three windows, uh, three figures open, and we can close them all. Advance. Uh, other uh, things that you can do before you run any of your programs is to type clear all 
which will remove everything from the workspace. Mm. You also can clear certain variables. For example, you can create variable A, you create variable B, and now you want to clear variable A, but not B. So you clear A, and now you have just B. Uh, in this exercise, I propose you to store uh, some data under a file name. Uh, you will use function save for storing your data, but this function requires the file name variable. This variable should be in text because file name is text and uh, we can create it using the current time which can be acquired with another function. Let's go line by line here. It is not a loop. This time in MATLAB as we have the variable of interest here, we want to save it in, in a shape of mat file. But first we create file name prefix. File name prefix is data, text data. Uh, as you see it is string or text and it is as long as for symbols. But at the end we want to add uh, the current date. How can we do it? Mm. First we use function clock that gives us uh, an array of current time values which is ordered as year, month, day, hour, minute and second and we assign it to the variable CLK CLK here we have the year the, the month the, the hour the, the, the day, the hour and so on this is our variable for clock And now, ah, there is a for loop. The for loop, this is something we, we might prefer to put in a, in a script. Let's create other script. Uh, name script. This is how we want to call it. Why? Ah, it's not open. We have to create a new in file, and we can save it as. We paste here everything we want. This is another for loop which runs five times for uh, and this nf variable will have consecutively uh, values of one, two, three, four, and five during each cycle of the loop. 
And here inside of the loop we use concatenation, which is already known to you. File name is joined with underscore sign and then you put this. What is this? This function print. It will print numerical values in a shape of a text of a certain format. And the format is instructed here while the number is given here. Uh, let's take first number out of this variable, which will be 2017, and see what this function gives to us. It gives us an answer. We don't assign uh, the outcome to anything, therefore it uh, generates automatically the name of the variable, ans, answer. And this answer is 2017 in text. It is a string. Example of how function sprint works. Let's indicate here something like 0 0.2. Gives us nothing because this. Uh, it's not nothing, it's two zeros, because we indicate that there must be two zeros before the decimal point, and nothing after it. Uh, if we change the, the format, it will give us one decimal, but not, but not two. Uh, this is about how it works, and the beauty of uh, the the approach is that uh, when you have months 12 there will be two elements in the variable outcome uh, and if you have months number 2 you get also two values. Therefore, the length of the file name will not change as a function of the actual current time. It will always be the same format, which is very convenient for sorting your data in chronological order. Uh, As soon as your file name file name is formed, you can run save. You can clear the variable, but afterwards, if you use the same file name, you can load it and restore the variable in the working space. But let's go step by step. First, we create file name variable. There is something strange in this expression. You use uh, file name as the uh, outcome of the expression, but also as the uh, input. What does it mean? It means that we take this initial content, we concatenate it with first. Uh, element of this array and we assign the result to the same file name so it will grow inside the loop after we will concatenate it again we add something at the end after we concatenate it another time if we remove semicolon after it we will be able to watch all this evolution in our command window. Now we execute it. 
and we see what happens. This is the first iteration. Uh, you can call loops, cycles, iterations, repetitive uh, actions which are done by the problem. So this is the first cycle, this is second cycle, third, fourth, and the last. Every time something adds up at the end of this file. And this is the, the the file name that we have at the end. Uh, now we, we can save it. Uh, better say, say, we save variable RA. Under this file name. How does it work? It is this kind of syntaxis. File name goes first, and then in the uh, apostles, you indicate the name of the variable which have to be saved. And now it is saved. Look at the very bottom of our file list. We get this file name with extension mat, which is data file created by mat. And now we can clear variable RRA. We don't need it anymore in our working space. We can restore it at any moment. Removed. But now let's use file name variable in order to load the data of RRA. It works. Now we have RRA again in our working space. What happens if we clear all the variables? Can we do it again? Let's try. We try to load file name. It doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because we don't have variable file name anymore. The MATLAB doesn't know what to load. The only thing we can do is to load it manually. How can we do it? We open the MAT file and we get our variable back. I guess that's enough for today. <laughs> uh, sorry for some mistakes and uh, inaccuracies in uh, uh, my presentation, uh, bugs or errors is something that happens all the time. Uh, and keep in mind that important is not to avoid errors by any means, but to be able to respond properly to the error message and to clean your, your code properly. The term for this in programming is debugging, remove all the bugs. Uh, in the future, I will record two more parts, two more sessions of this teaching course. Uh, one dedicated to installation of Psych Toolbox uh, and uh, other necessary software and we will watch few demos uh, which are the part of Psych Toolbox so that you can see the beauty of 
the uh, the tool toolbox and many different applications which can be uh, performed with its help. Uh, and the third part, maybe the most uh, desirable part of this uh, uh, course will be actually training on using functions of Psych Toolbox for timing screen control, keyboard acquisition, and uh, we will try to understand how can we build our own experiment, acquire data, uh, and after this, with the help of all the tutorials available online, with the help of uh, the comments which are written by those who wrote previous scripts and experimental designs, you will be able to be very flexible and to create your own unique uh, experimental design, run your experiment, analyze your data, and to publish them in Nature or in other good journals. Good luck and see you next time.